is there anybody else out there besides us? Why should we be interested in finding life elsewhere? These are the questions raised by Dr. Bill Stone, explorer, caver, inventor of a new class of robot called cryobots. There are a number of moons out there called ocean worlds. Stone is building his cryobots with NASA for unmanned exploration in space, nearly 400 million miles from Earth. There's a reasonable chance that we could find microbial life in those oceans. Simple-celled, single-celled, multi-celled creatures. Could that exist on other worlds? The team he's assembled spends years testing these robots in Earth's most extreme environments. Try to take science fiction and turn it into science fact. By the time their trip is scheduled, his cryobots will be ready to search for life across the galaxy. I was 14 when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. Purpose appears to be very fine grain. I wanted to be just like those guys. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to go to the moon and beyond. I went through college, grad school, and, and a PhD program thinking all along that I was going to join the astronaut corps and we were going to go back to the moon. I was not selected. I was told I was too independent. <laughs> Which, but that's okay because I've since gone on to do work uh, related to private space exploration and exploration here on Earth in very deep caves. Some of our crews have been to the deepest places inside this planet that anybody has ever been. And distances so remote that it takes more time to get there than it would to get to the moon by rocket. So to me, that's kind of where I really find life. Everything else in between is just preparing for that. I founded Stone Aerospace about 15 years ago with the idea of putting together a collection of very talented individuals who could take on difficult scientific problems and turn them into reality. A lot of the stuff that we do involves expeditionary type work to places where it's difficult to get to and requires technology to do things there. Europa is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter. It is entirely covered with ice, and that ice is over an ocean of significant depth. To me, it's a very interesting philosophical question. You know, is there life other than Earth? And here's a chance within our lifetime to prove it one way or another. The best place that we can get on Earth right now that is kind of like Europa is the Antarctic ice shelf. That has depths of ice of up to 4,000 meters uh, over subglacial lakes. If we could build a device that would go through 4,000 meters of ice in Antarctica, we would be paving the way to enabling a Europa mission. A cryobot is a general term for uh, what some people would refer to as a, a melt probe or a, an ice penetrator. This is Valkyrie. This is the world's first laser-powered cryobot. This entire thing right here is a closed cycle hot water drill. The purpose of a cryobot is to get through the ice, but once you get there, what do you do? Well, the idea is to deliver an autonomous underwater vehicle that goes looking for life. Artemis is a, a hovering autonomous underwater vehicle. It was built to test ideas for how to explore long ranges under uh, an ice cap and to investigate ways in which you would look for life in environments like that. We've been to Antarctica three times now. I've spent almost a year there uh, with our crews. There is a really large suite of scientific sensors on this vehicle, everything from five high-definition cameras to 
water uh, collection systems. We can measure ocean currents. So I'm getting a line that way. And we can tell with tracking antennas where the vehicle is moving below the ice cap, even if it's hundreds of meters below the ice. This is the first one in which we've had a vehicle where you drill through an ice cap and then send it off for long distances on its own and have it come back and actually dock, latch, and be automatically uh, pulled to the surface. So this is really a, a, a prototype for a long-range Europa sub-ice uh, carrier vehicle, what we would refer to as the mothership, something that would be able to create topographical maps of the core of, of Europa, for example. It requires onboard intelligence at a level which we have never deployed yet, not even, for example, with Curiosity on Mars right now. So the robots will have to be much more independent than they are today, and they will have very specific roles in what they need to do. Could we pull off a Europa mission to the subsurface ocean? Answer is absolutely yes, 100% yes. I believe that it is launchable within 10 years if the money was on the table today. There's two things I think that drive us. One is the pursuit of happiness, and the second one is the pursuit of curiosity. If Galileo had not been interested in the motions of planets, or Copernicus, or Kepler, who would have provided the information that allowed Newton to figure out the law of gravitation? These little things are revelations about the universe, about us, our place in it. How could you not find satisfaction in solving those curious problems?